Bears. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman on this Thursday, the 9th of June. We're already moving quickly into June. Dow's down 45 at 32,864. Remember a week ago, I said, I'm anticipating, and I drew this in, an, an oval pattern, Chapman Wave Stalk Lake Formation possibi possibility. It's not a rectangle. It is decisively a an oval where it runs up to a high and it runs down to a low, and after that it makes narrowing highs and lows. So it's only an oval. It cannot be a rectangle. That's a completely different pattern with the Chapman Wave uh, methodology uh, structure, a different one. Um so let me just do this right here. Uh, within the context of um, this particular pattern, there isn't really a duration for the uh, for the oval pattern called the Chapman Wave Stalk Leg Formation. So there's usually a lot of movement up that makes the first big leg. This has got nothing to do with Chapman Wave Peak, APP, C, C etc. It just is a big move up. And then the price of whatever you're following starts to go sideways. And that sideways pattern says, no matter what happens, you keep thinking it's going to break to the upside, and it doesn't. Then you keep thinking it's going to break to the downside. That's the technique. It traps you. It's like a rectangle formation, except in this case, the pattern itself, one that I developed when I was hand charting way back in the 1970s, uh, needs a structure that says, at a certain point, if it, uh, in fact, right now, going into tomorrow is just perfect for it either to break down, and that would mean, mean it doesn't have to close. It just has to break under 32,509. That would take it below the, the low that was made six, six sessions ago. That's, that's negative, and that means you've got now an arch formation, and you can start tumbling to the downside. Or, and this is really important, it breaks to the upside to start a new leg, in this case, above 33,272 in the Dow daily, to start creating the neck. Now, it's really unusual to go from a peak A to a leg B for the neck. What very often happens is that every if everything comes together, it has an explosive move that becomes not really a one-to-one -one in exact measurement, but a breakout that is much bigger than the small neck that comes back in a beak formation, stalk leg, single leg up, tucks the other leg underneath the body, oval body. Then it has the neck, and then the neck at a certain point, maybe it could be anything from slightly higher to even a third higher, comes back, and then the beak test the upper part in case in this case 32,000 33, and how it breaks under that level and for how long is really important in this particular instance if there is I, I don't know what good news there could be now because the jobs number wasn't um, the jobs number number was still quite low meaning that the Fed is kind of still stuck if the jobs number a job list number was higher uh, that would have said, uh, you know what, maybe the Fed can start loosening in another couple of months. Now we don't know. So I don't know what the CPI number is going to be. Whatever it is, it might be a momentary spike. This could be the momentary spike that goes to 33,273 or higher. And then by Monday or Tuesday, it comes back, and the big test is how does the beak act inside? Because if it closes under 32,509 at any point, either immediately or after the spike up, that is really negative. So as it stands right now, the MACD is strong, the stochastic is flat at 89%. Nothing here is negative except for one little thing. Yes, the 9 period is over the 14, but you've taken, since the high that was made on the 20, was that the 30th or something? On the 1st of June at 33,272, um, it hasn't been able to break above. That is a negative because price, with the technical strong, price has to move. Price is not moving, and that makes me nervous. So what I've said to subscribe to my opening call, we're still long. We're long for way down. 
uh, way down, you know, in the new one. We are way down at about uh, the last one was at about 31,480. Here we are at 32,785. Um, we've taken some profits, we've got two newest positions in the near to, nearer term. Um, just not messing around. And we actually, even though we've been quite bullish overall from the low that was made. We have very few positions. We've had a very big cash position. I'm ready to put that cash to work in very selective areas. And this particular sorting out over the last week where a lot of people said, oh, this is just terrible. We're going down. We're going to crash. And a lot of people said, oh, no, no, no. We, we, we could go higher. Um, uh, you're stuck in the middle. And that just confuses everybody. We've been anticipating it. So what we've done is we've traded uh, a three times long index and intraday traded it, taking money off and then set back, taking money off, set back, maybe taking a little loss, but mostly we may have profits. And all I'm doing is that. And the reason is, look at this. I, I mentioned to subscribers yesterday, the SLX, which is the steel ETF, um, with all the steel companies, had done fantastically. It gone from 54 up to 65. 11 points. I mean, it's nearly 20%. But wait a minute. It went to a leg E. And yesterday it pulled back sharply, and today it's down again. And here it is at 60.88 after being at 65, it's 9% down in two days, three days. So even when you're finding something, for instance, I've spoken about IBM. IBM has done so well. It's, it's a leader, in fact, in the uh, machine technology, uh, information technology, IA. This is an artificial intelligence, cloud inter and enterprise software. Look at this, it's really turned the corner, but it hasn't been able to break out yet. Here it is at 140, and it has gone from the 125 level back in late May all the way to 145. I mean, that's 20 points, that's fabulous for a big company like IBM, and now it's stalling. But it's only stalling, it's not failing, it's just stalling. A CRM, this is salesforce.com. I've lumped the two together because they're kind of in a little bit in the same area because IBM's changed its, its stripes, and I showed that it made a double, a triple top, A, peak A, and then peak B fractionally higher, and then peak C, yesterday was fractionally higher, and today it's having a nice move up 255. I like this action. I did want to go long, but I, I, I decided that there's a lot going on, and I needed to be more um, flexible in the sense that, uh, yes, we might add it to the list, but it is already in leg C. Um, I needed to see what happened today. And so far today is quite good action. And it's broken the, the down channel, the, the high of 311.25 back in November of 2020. <clears throat> that was the all-time high with a little doji candle. Plummets down to the low of 154. I would say cutting off is you know, a serious thing. Um, and now it's up, up beautifully. I'm 154 to 190, 140 points. I mean, what is that? Yeah, 40 points for 154, that's 30-something uh, percent, just uh, boom, like that. So, yes, it's good, but it's not great, but it's very good near-term action. So I just wanted to – I'm just showing you, I'm pointing out aspects that are really important at this particular moment. Um, and you can look at the on-balance volume is a tad overboard. Now, remember, I use on-balance volume. Tom O'Brien uses volume, pure volume. He looks at the where the price was at a certain volume, where it is now. He, Tomorrow, uh, today's the last day to sign up. Is there only take a limited number of people? I would recommend if you are really interested in learning Tom's technique backwards and forwards, this is a perfect time to jump right in, sign up for Tom's, and you get your book, you get a whole bunch of things. It's worth it. In a time of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16-year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner 
Ready Development Stage Gold Project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Yeah, so a couple of questions just popped right in. Uh, in your chart that you're showing of Salesforce, salesforce.com, can you comment on this peak A, peak B, peak C, and that big cup formation that you've got? Yeah, so what I like to do is there's a technique that I've developed over the years. Um, I try to find the plumb line. That is where the number of bars on the left are showing that if there is a turnaround, you could get an equal number of bars to the right, either going back towards the top of the uh, cup formation or in the bottom of the arch formation but sometimes the visual is not it, it doesn't work it just you, you I'm very visual I I'm, I was a, once a graphic artist um, I this is I, I'm just visual so yes there's a mathematical part of it but I love the visuals but so what I do is if I could make a, a midpoint uh, and I see that the the rallying that's occurring looks to me like there could be an equal number of bars, then I consider that the plumb line. This isn't the plumb line, the low of the 12th of May. I had to move it, and I've moved it to right there. I moved it to this bar. Now, I have a particular candle in, in my workshops and in my, my webinars that I give, and in the webinars that are online, for those of you who are part of my service, my opening call service, um, you'll see that I've got a lot of webinars based on the plumb line itself. But I choose if I can't get the midpoint, then I'll go to the very next thing, which is a particular candle. From that candle, what I do is I like to draw from the left side to the right a Chapman Wave inside wedge target resistance line. In this particular case, if I took it from the line that I wanted, which was this low of the 9th of May, and I drew it uh, vertically, sorry, horizontally, I would get something much lower down. So maybe that worked earlier on. I took it away. I just don't remember anymore. But what I did choose, because the left side, the the place that I'm going to is the high of the 20th of April at 193.30. But I also like to bump right up against the previous major down thrust. So I go all the way to this candle right here on the 14th. Now what I'm looking at is, I take that distance and I go to the plumb line of, the, of the, cho the choice that I made. In this case, I've chosen this particular candle right here on the 16th. 
I go to the right and it says that by the 15th of June, uh, salesforce.com should be testing the high of the 20th of April, which is 193.30. High today is 192.22. So it's got another couple of days to go into next week to be able to test that level. That'll just be one point. And it's not, it's a cup formation, but it's really only a cup formation in that I chose the left side high. The, the real one should have been, first of all, that high that was made in the 20th and then going all the way to the 12th, which is a high of 190, uh, of 201.12. But I'm, I like to do this all very conservatively, and that's the way it works. Now, the next thing that's important is that, yes, for the first time, there's a, there's a chance that by tomorrow, we don't know, we could close above the 14 black 14 period exponential moving average for the very first time since we broke down the week of the 3rd of December up in the 289 area, uh, I mean, 290s. So this will be the first time. And you're getting the MACD for the very first time. We've still got another whole day and a half to go before the Friday afternoon, 4 o'clock close on the weekly chart. But the histogram is turning positive. In other words, we've crossed positive in the MACD. At this point, it's up 0.94, but the, the, the week is young. We've still got to go until 4 o'clock tomorrow. Stochastic went under 20%, uh, went under 12, I think it actually went to 9%. It went to 7%. Um, so uh, at this point, it's at 24%. So there are some things here that are starting to, to work. But if you look at this monthly chart, as in one Foul move. It's gone from a trough A, a huge trough A, uh, in the one 180s from the 311 all-time high, and then a bounce to the upside. Didn't even make a peak A, and then plummeted down again. So it's gone to a leg B in basically one big swoop to the downside of the monthly chart. So this is just an attempt at a rally. I'm using this just as an example because a question came up. All right, that's that. So next thing, so all I'm saying is this is a leg C. It should go to a D. We're in a buy mode. Um, but it, look, how, look how it struggled to go to each higher peak. Well, the day's young, but so far. Um, so I'm saying if anyone's interested in this, yeah, you could just nibble. You could start your position here, but the biggest position should come. Maybe wait for D and then see where it pulls back. But uh, I'm just suggesting to you that that gap, it might take a little while to fall, but at some point, there should be an attempt to get back under 174. Um, and it's at 191 right now. So, so far, this is nice action. And it's good action. That's the reason why I'm saying there are certain areas that I want to try to get into for subscribers. And then I want to build a position saying that there's a chance that some stocks might have seen a pretty major low, even though we'll go back towards that level to test it later on. But that's the way I'm looking at it. I'm not sure this is one in that category, but I'm saying these are the stocks I'm looking at. All right. Enough with that. And the question came in about Exxon. Uh, Exxon, yeah. Oh, oh, very nice. A uh, good statement there. Uh, Pat says, the Dow, which is the world's oldest actively managed index. I've got it. I've tracked it uh, back to 1920, but I've actually written down. I've got it on hand charted paper. Going all the way back to the 1890 level, I think it was 1890. Um, so... World's oldest actively managed index uh, kicked out of uh, kicked out ExxonMobil nearly two years ago, along with Pfizer and Raytheon Technologies. You know, I've talked about this over and over for decades about the Dow, that they always make a move into something that is about at that point about to go uh, much higher, and then it just sort of disappears, and then it comes back later. It's, I mean, it's really hard for the for the board to, to you know choose these things correctly. But let's have a look. Yes, Exxon down from yesterday's high, um, not an all time high. One seventy, what one oh five? Oh, one oh five, fifty seven was uh, yesterday's high. The all time high was oh one hundred four point seventy six. Yes, it broke it. Was that the all time high? Oh, oh, look at that. Yes, sirree, it was the all time high. Look at Raytheon. RTX, of course, Raytheon's changed now. It's RTX. It used to be um, uh, Raytheon, RTX. Oh, Raytheon used to be. Oh, I used to know it so well. I have a friend who who is a senior engineer there. 
uh, uh, foreign affairs. Anyway, made a peak E high, but look at that, 93 down to 40 back in March of 2020. So yeah, uh, they tend to choose. What was the other one? Oh, Pfizer. Look at Pfizer. And each one of these that I'm showing you now has just recently been an all-time high. So Pfizer hit that major, major long-term inside track Chapman Wave uh, resistance line, goes right into it, goes slightly above it intramonth, Makes an all-time high of 80, uh, uh, 61.71. Of course, there's multiple, multiple splits. And now it's trading at 53.16. So, yeah, they tend to do that. And, in fact, they put Salesforce back in just as, where did they put Salesforce back in? They put it in um, as it went up to its high. And then it went all the way to 311.25 before it plunged 50%. So yeah, it's, it's, it's tough to do, but I always chuckle at that, uh, you know, what can I say? Dow's down 93, S&P's down 9. I'll be right back. Hot stuff. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Tom O'Brien has just announced a live Timing the Trade webinar Friday, June 10th from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Join Tom O'Brien for five hours of live education as he teaches you his trading methodology right from his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. In this live webinar, Tom O'Brien will be teaching you his entire trading system, including quality volume, ABC structures, Fibonacci confluence zones, cause and effect, swing points, and more. We'll be limiting this class to 40 attendees, so please do not delay and reserve your seat today for this special live event with Tom O'Brien. All attendees will also receive a physical copy of his book, The Art of Timing the Trade, an $88 value, mailed to you, along with the free month of his daily newsletter, Market Insights, a $169 value. For all the details and to reserve your seat today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So uh, we're looking at the um, one-minute chart of the E-mini. Just hit the 200-period proofing average once again. I think there's an attempt at least to move higher. My suspicion was, and I said to subscribers, that there's a chance that uh, in the end, by the end of the day, we actually close a lot narrow in a fairly narrow range, waiting for t tomorrow's news. Uh, we are looking at uh, leg B, uh, just begun a B. Oh, it's actually a leg C. Let me just do this. So, so many of you asked me, could I do some of this live so that you can keep learning about the Chapman Wave methodology? Look, single leg A up right here from that low that was made at about 10, 12 this morning at about 4090, goes to peak A. Then it pulls back, and underneath it, 
I forgot. I, I've lost, for some reason, I've lost the ability to keep the uh, letters holding. I have to now keep clicking on that. So this is another A underneath the previous A. This is another A because this is the low bar that started the whole move up. And now the next highest peak from this lower A is right here. So that becomes a B. And then this becomes C. And it's testing the, look at this, how long it's taken over the, uh, at the 200 period moving average. My suspicion is it wants to break away. It wants to get to the 417 area. Look at this big single leg A in failure mode in the 120. Look at the 120. Just, it did so, um, I, I was asked, could I please keep a Fibonacci? Uh, I usually put them on and take them off because I do visual things, uh, which pretty much does the same thing sometimes as a Fibonacci. But look, uh, look at that beautiful cup formation. And uh, look at this big spike that goes to peak D and E, and it had the same, the measurement, this, this low bar became the doji low bar of, at 2150, 950, uh, 950 yesterday, on the 8th, yeah, yesterday, um, that became the midpoint of a move to the right side, which took just an extra three bars to get to that peak D, and then it popped to E. And that was a Fibonacci number right there. Now look what's happened, a sharp move down, trough A, trough B, trough C, and now this is an attempt at a rally. So these are all things that um, are just part and parcel, but the irony of the whole thing is that I can do this, look. Oh, I can do this, and that wasn't the, what I wanted to do. That has all the notations written in. All right, before we go on, I will look at love for uh, for the den. I do believe I have a caller. I'm going to go right there right now. We have a caller. Oh, we have Sharky from uh, um, the Massachusetts area. Hi, how are you doing? Hi, good morning, Basil. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Yeah, I'm doing a little bit better here. <laughs> wow, but, you've uh, had a tough time, I know. I hope you are doing better. Yep, yep, feeling feeling good now. It seems like I've got this pneumonia thing under control now. So we're we're on the mend. So good, um, good. yeah, so this is how I'm kind of, and maybe you can help me wrap my head around this and stuff. So uh, listen to a little bit of uh, uh, Justine Lagarde, the ECB, uh, you know, uh, equivalent of the Fed chairman over here this morning. Okay, okay. and and I did some research on oil and last night and. Just what's happening with, you know, maybe the prospects of China coming online now, uh, coming out of this thing, um, and uh, you know their demand for oil is, is going to put a uh, uh, you know some pressure on the supply, um, and oil, uh, from what I've researched, is going to be, you know, making its way up. Um, also, one of the things that was striking about what she said, okay, about rates, it seems like it's a coordinated effort by both. The U.S. and and the ECB central bank uh, to raise rates and and to remove assets from the balance sheet and, and draw that down. Um, and she, you know she talked pretty eloquently about we're in we're in a situation now instead of low inflation and possibly stagflation, we're in an environment now of high inflation. And and because of um, oil and, and other things, uh, food and stuff like that. It's making it real difficult for everyone. Okay, and and she spoke a little bit about the war and Russia's aggression and and how that has impacted oil markets and 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 food markets. So, where where are we headed here? Um, is the area um, to look at still in 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 oil, or, or is there a pause here? And I, mean, I just kind of want to get your view on all of that. So and. Under normal circumstances, virtually everything we've looked at any of any of the energy sector, any of the oil stocks, uh, I, I mentioned, I mentioned uh, Exxon just a little earlier. Exxon is a little bit below. Yesterday is uh, actually multi-year high. Uh, CVX is another one. This is Chevron. Uh, it went to a peak. Uh, I don't know if that's a B or an F. Uh, the doji candle, I'm always wary of doji candles at highs. It just, yep. everything I'm looking at says there should be and there has been some kind of a pullback. And I've spoken about this before. And we have seen a high-level consolidation, but we've not seen 
the kind of pullback where you can just grab, say, the SCO, which is the um, multi-short crude oil pro shares, um, which I, I love them when they were split down in the uh, 3 $4 area, now they're at 18 But just to grab them and say, okay, no, this is a very difficult period that we're in because of all the, the, the factors that are going into making crude oil scarce. At some point, you get a little bit of an alleviation, but the overall aspect of two, I mean, you've still got, I don't know what Germany's doing. I know they're trying to cut back on their oil lines, uh, just get natural gas. It just seems to me that this is an area that is still has the chance to have a, a consolidation, but a high level consolidation. In other words, you just have to wait patiently. Uh, core positions you hold, shorter term you take something off, and then you wait to put that back. To me, that's that's what I'm looking at now. Because if I look at the USO, uh, that is the crew. That's the U.S. National. Uh, this is the U.S. United States Oil Fund LP. It's un unlike natural gas. This thing is below. The, I mean, if you go back. This, this has highs up in the 350 area uh, back in 2011. So this is nothing what we're looking at the United States oil fund right now. It's in fact just in a rectangle formation from the high of uh, January of 2020 at 106 down to the low that was made in the <coughs> terrible calamity when, when oil went negative, um, the futures went negative at uh, $16. So this is just coming back. But the real implication is the price, the actual price of, of, of gas, some of the highest levels we've ever seen here in the United States. So that is going to have its own impact. And that's the reason why I still feel that, that for subscribers, you've got to be very selective here, having a big cash position. There's nothing wrong with that. So I don't know. I mean, Lagarde, I've, I've heard her speak. She's, she is pretty eloquent. But I've, I've, to my memory, I don't actually remember her She's almost like an economist in that she's really good at the look back period. What happens in mm. the future? I mean, it's a tough enough if you're doing technical analysis, but if you're doing fundamental analysis, that's even tougher. So I'm just yeah. saying, let's look at the price. And the price says, yes, we are kind of toppy. Uh, yes, all the oil companies are having major. I mean, if you leave, let's just go to MRO, a Marathon Oil. I mean, look at the last move up and then it's stalled. Uh, it had a spectacular move, leg E in the monthly chart and a, and a peak D in the daily chart, and yet it's still struggling at 33.24 as a high on May the, on May the 31st. It's just stuck in a range, but it isn't breaking yeah, ben, down. So can I hang on for the break? I just got one, you know, one really yes, question I will. to that. Sure. We've, yeah, we've got Sharky holding on. We're down 40, uh, 62 in the Dow. We'll be right back to discuss all these macro uh, aspects. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. We're getting back with White Chalk in uh, Massachusetts. And what else are we looking at? Basil, you know, um, SD is, is one that I, I, I talked to, you know, called you a while back. And, uh, you know, I guess I'd want to look at that. And I, I just want to just your quick opinion on if oil continues and inflation continues to go this way in, in a macro view, what, what are the implications, for, you know, for the market as we move well, through the summer and, in, uh, and into the For fall? those of us who lived through the 1970s with oil, in fact, I remember flying, I was going back to see my family uh, in South Africa. Um, I re we decided, because we had a newborn son, that we would, uh, I, I decided, I don't know why, that we'd have all stops, and we took this Pan Am flight, and uh, we flew over the, oh, uh, the west coast of Africa, the Gold Coast, and that's mm -hmm. where they have a, a number of oil, uh, oil facilities in some of those cities there. And I remember looking. I, I looked out the plane, and then I said to the um, um, uh, to the uh, hostess, "I said, excuse me, what's going on out there? It looks like a parking lot." She says, "Those are the oil tankers that are sitting there because these countries got so much money so quickly. They started to build and build and build, but they didn't have the facilities, the docking mm -hmm. facilities. So they got all these tankers with concrete and everything. Those tankers are sitting out there, and they've had to bomb some of them because the concrete is hard, and they've been there so long. It looked like a parking lot. Um, that yeah. was in the 1970s. So um, the, the, the ramifications are really not good at all for everything. I mean, just from your petroleum products to everything. So if crude oil at any stage actually starts to trade, um, let's put it this way. It's at 121. If it starts to trade in the 128 to 132 area for more than two, three weeks, not just a sudden spike in the give back, that's going to have ramifications that we can't even be sure of. And yes, there's, we've got two things. We've got to decrease the container ships. Um, they are, in fact, containers and container ships it seems to me that they're kind of in a blockade right now. There aren't people to, enough people to unload them. We should have used our, our, our National Guard to just go right in. And, yep, you would have paid the union workers at the same time, but also included the guards. We should have had them unloading ships for two years now. We would have been done with that. And now China's yep. – actually, China's almost shutting down one more time. So the implications yep. are very negative. So there's no question. So to answer the question real simply, a much higher price in crude oil that holds will have ramifications on the economy. There's just no question about it. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Okay. Those well, thank you so much for calling. Great. Always love to hear from you. Look after yourself. I hope you feel much better very soon. I will. Thank you very much. God, Godspeed. And to you too. Thank you very much. So, folks, let's just do this. A couple of a couple of questions came in. So, can I look at Baidu? So, remember, I'm saying that there's been a spectacular run of, I mean, percentage gains 
from 100 to 100 and almost 50 in Baidu. That's a 50%, incredible 50% gain. But wait a minute, this is a stock that was at 354.82 in February of 2021. Had a little bit of a dip to the 101 area. Yep, 101.62, uh, May the 12th. Here we are, uh, not even a month later. And it's gone peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D. And there's your E with a doji candle. Could have a little bit of a rest here on the 200 period moving average. Yes, thank you for pointing that out. So percentage-wise, remember, I'm, I believe very strongly that it's what you enter at and what you, what, what you make that's way more important than uh, where it's come from. And in this particular instance, yep, it, it had a, a whopper of a decline. Uh, a, B, let's just C. Yeah, and now it's making a peak. Uh, I can't do this consecutively. Gosh, I, I used to know it so quickly I'd be able to. We haven't had this for a long time where it's suddenly changed and it's gone to peak E. There you are. And it's in the, uh, in the, in the weekly, it's only a leg A. And you can see it's going to bump into resistance. Spectacular move you can expect at this point that it becomes just a little bit harder for it to keep making the gains. So that's Baidu. FXI, which is something that I spoke about earlier on, I said there are enough American stocks that are you know, giving, you, giving you really weird things. Why go to China? But if you're looking at profits, a profit is a profit. I see nothing wrong with that. So this and, and FXI, the China large cap ETF, made a peak E yesterday. It's pulling back. Could digest gains for a little bit here. So a couple of things we need to talk about. VIX index. Trying to make it as simple as possible. There it is. How important is the 200 period exponential moving average? That's how important it is. One, two, three, four, five, six. Since six days ago, it's trying to test the 24s. It's at 24.47. It's just stuck there. It isn't actually running sharply. It is at 51 cents at 24.47. This is the volatility index month uh, daily chart. Uh, yes. Uh, Dow's down 130, S&P's down 14, and yet this is only up 48 cents. It is up 2%. That, that, that doesn't make a difference. <coughs> Excuse me. Tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Today right now is at 10 minutes to uh, just about 10 to 11. Let's call it 24 hours from now. During my show tomorrow, if the volata volatility index is up over 25 60 or actually touching 26 as the as the market just tanks and we're looking at the Dow down 450 S&P's down uh, 80 that is going to be very negative because what it's saying is it's taking the 200 period exponential moving average and moving away from it on the upside and breaking all six or seven bars worth of trading and it's trading up in that area if, if by Friday or even Monday. On the other hand, if there's something that is just like, rather than light at the end of the tunnel, which is the train coming along, if instead we're looking at um, some amelioration of the tension and the Dow's able to move whatever it closes at today, if by tomorrow at this time, the Dow is up 180 to 250 points and holding very well, not just a spike in the, at 8.30 and then a, a drop, but is holding very well. Volatility index is at 2370 or lower. I'm going to suggest to you that there's a chance that the market just has a really good week of relief rallying. We'll have to deal with that if, if that's the case in terms of saying what is going to work, what has worked and is coming back. In other words, do we suddenly see the SLX, the um, steel sector, come alive again? Well, this is the way it's come down here. It says at a peak E, way below uh, below the 17.43, 18th of April high. Hmm, that's going to be tough. Amazon, let's just go through these. A lot of people ask me about these things. So let's just do it now. Amazon, yes, it comes off the low of about 101 and spirals to the 128 area. A wonderful percentage gain. This is a stock that was trading at, uh, where did I put it? Right there. It was, hey, if I'm, oh, oh, it's split. Of course it's split. Um I have to now to give you the new number. I should have typed that in. Uh, of 188.65 in July. 
and it went all the way down to 100. I mean, let's face it, 180 down to 100. Whew, that's a big move. But look at that nice move to the upside. So you want to see by Wednesday of next week, Amazon trading at 131 or better. You want to see, uh, let's go to uh, Facebook. Gonna check. Okay. Oh, they already changed the symbol. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. DFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Well, folks, in this segment, this final segment, uh, yeah, I, I got some questions. Tomorrow's Technical Friday, so I'm going to go through a whole bunch of the things that I, I was asked about on a technical basis. Um, yeah, Facebook changed its name to Meta. I don't know. I, I, it take, it'll take me years to get to saying Meta. So look, peak C1, C2, C3, C4, a triple top right there in the um, E-mini, and that whole cluster formation from 10 to 10, and at the 200 period moving average, and then it arches over, holds nicely, and goes to peak A, and then I said underneath it's a peak A, then another one, then B, and C, but look what happened. The 200 period moving average, it couldn't hold above it. It's using that, and it couldn't break above a new high to go to a D, and now it's turning down. It made the arch formation. Look at this for a beautiful left side, right side price time match. You can learn these techniques. Maybe tomorrow I'll do a whole thing just kind of showing these techniques in real time. So here we go. Look, left side, right side, beautiful plumb line. I just wasn't able to do this uh, during the show. But tomorrow maybe I'll take time. But look at that. It's one bar late. Is that not a fantastic technique? Look at this. There's your plumb line right there. Boom. Same number of bars to the upside, same number of bars to the downside. You remember people always say, oh, it just crashes to the downside. No, 
Same number of bars, the arch and cup formations are so important. If you can learn them, uh, it just really helps you. So just sum up, I don't like what I'm seeing. We'll have to know what's happening tomorrow. We've got a bid in for one of the indexes, actually three times long one of the indexes, on a, on a serious pullback later today. And even then, we've got a tight stop. And if we can survive into Monday or Tuesday, there are a lot of stocks that are really worthy and waiting for a pretty decent second phase to the rally that started off the lows that were made in May. So that's what I'm looking at. As I said today, I think that we'll close, we'll maybe even come back from the, the, the doldrums earlier in the day today, later in the show after about 3 p.m. and just sort of like when the Fed does the Fed speak at 2 o'clock on Wednesday. But if the market's sharply high or sharply lower, it just kind of neutralizes as it gets into that uh, announcement. We might find that link. Have a wonderful day. 